Um, help to me is the physical, social, mental um, well-being in your environment. Health. That's being as healthy as I can be. I know I have um, disabilities because of um, arthritis in my hips and knees. So I've had two surgeries, a hip replacement and a knee replacement. And I need another hip and another knee replacement. <laughs> so, but even though I have that, I still try to come to the wellness center and work out three times a week, four if I can, but at least three times a week. And I see the nutritionist once a week for nutritional advice and to weigh in. <laughs> Health means to me, hmm, it encompasses a couple things, a couple aspects of my life, I think. Um, obviously, the physical things in order for my body to be healthy, to be able to function. But it also includes the emotional things. You have to have a well mind in order to be able to have a well body to go along with it. And I think those two things combined together helps you to be spiritually strong. Because all three of them balance out and make a healthy person. I have uh, diabetes, so that's a big role, and I, I use the medical services, the pharmacy services, the dental services, everything. Um, also, with um, working with the environmental health unit, they are um, critical in caring for, making sure that our water is um, tested whenever we have a water line break, so that is um, making sure the community is safe as well. It's helped me kind of put my life back on track and um, they gave me the support that I was kind of looking for and lacking um, that my family and friends couldn't give me. I think the community should be more aware that the people that work here, they care. Like I said, the people and the staff that are here, they're not just your family and your friends, they're community. And a lot of them are involved in a lot of activities that we do within the community. And that's important because they kind of have an invested interest in what goes on here. We, uh, we are doing way better. Um, also, there's less stress and uh, help me manage and balance my life. Well, it helped my grandson. He was living with us at the time and he <clears throat> noticed my diet and how it was changing and it encouraged him to do the same thing. And he started eating healthier and he started exercising and weightlifting and it helped him. And I've noticed my husband, he has lost 30 some pounds as well. <laughs> we know that we've been able to help people. They've told us you know, how we've helped them. And, and it's great when you can see um, how things have changed over time when someone has come in and they're very ill and there are lots of questions about you know what what their um, what their uh, illness is and how they can best um, manage it and then getting the resources available to them you know and what, what can help them um, and just seeing that incorporating the family including them to help them to understand too so that it's not just the one person who's dealing with it all the family um, can become more knowledgeable and by being more knowledgeable about about it, they're more comfortable and they can be um, a support person. So we, we've seen that and um, it's, it's amazing, you know, um, that bridge that family needs to help their, their loved one and to be able to do that for people, you know, to let them know that there is help there. It's not, it doesn't have to be as, as hard or challenging as it may seem. It may start out that way, but it doesn't. It gets easier. Uh, the Seneca Nation Health Services have been here on the reservation since I was knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> I remember actually having services over in the Thomas Indian School and waiting in the lobby for the nurse to come out and get you. <laughs> Um, so I've been coming here to the health center since I was young. Um, all the time, my mother was a nurse, so she always encouraged us to eat healthy, stay active, try to um, keep up with our physicals, immunizations, and all those services are offered here at our clinic. Hey, you know, hey, you know.
Well, let's see, I've used the, um, the medical services for the, um, I needed a, a walker and a cane after both surgeries. So they helped me with that. And they also helped arrange for at-home services after surgery. They connected me with the right departments. So for 30 days, I had in-home um, services. And they also uh, referred me to the nutritionist because I did need help trying to lose weight and I wanted to get my glucose down. It had reached 100 when I weighed 232. <laughs> so after a year, a little after, about a year and a half, when I was tested for my glucose again, it was down to 80. So that's where I want it to be. <laughs> and I also, um, like I said, I use the exercise specialist. Will maybe has helped me with an exercise program and for um, strengthening. Because after each surgery, I found that I needed to be stronger in my upper body, my arms and legs too. So he gave me exercises that I still am doing. I do cardio and um, strengthening three, four times a week. Um, annually, I come here for physical. Unfortunately, in 2009, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. When I was diagnosed with the breast cancer, the clinic referred me out to Roswell Park. It's an excellent facility. Not only did the clinic help me to find a place to receive the best care I could for my cancer diagnosis, they also offered me services for counseling and services for transportation. If there was anything that I needed that I wasn't able to provide or figure out from Roswell, they were right there to help me. And I think their services expand maybe beyond that because the people that work here, quite a few of them, are members of our community. So it's not just another staff member, it's actually your family, your friends, and your community, the people that you see every single day. So I actually feel comfortable coming here for the services that I receive. <laughs> I attend the uh, Wellness Center here at Allegheny. And I want to say that uh, I'm very um, thankful for having uh, uh, the Wellness Center to um, help me with my diabetes. Um, it's been about three years now that I was uh, notified that they thought that I was borderline diabetic. Um, and it was suggested I attend these uh, um, classes that uh, teach about what diabetes is and um, uh, also about food, about uh, glucose, uh, all those things. I attended that, started to attend it, and then um, my uh, condition went into uh, diabetes. Um, at that time, my A1C was 7.2 and I, be, I went to the went through the classes they talked about and taught us about um, uh, food about um, carbohydrates uh, all those things that are um, uh, not good for um, uh, blood sugar and I began taking medicine and I began changing my diet. Um, the program and the classes that we've had are really good because they teach what the uh, food values are and um, how they act on your body and um, how to control uh, your um, blood gl uh, glucose levels. And I think it would be a good, I really good idea if the um, Wellness Center and the Seneca Nation would go to families and get them to start learning as children how to eat and what not to eat and so on. I think that would really be very helpful. I mean, of course, plus the exercise and so on. But um, 
what I've been experiencing so far, I'm, I'm very uh, grateful that we have this program because today, um, who knows if I'm, if, if I'm not um, taking care of this condition and um, working, at, working with the uh, wellness center, if I'm not doing that, I, I may be gone today. Who knows? And so I always, I always, every chance I get, I always talk it up and uh, suggest uh, what I'm what I'm saying now. I think the most successful was the community playground that's located at the Sailor Building. In 2001, we. Um, we built that playground. We were able to use the diabetes grant to purchase the equipment, but we couldn't hire um, people to come in and install it. And um, what we did was we recruited the community and we had people, 150 plus people who donated their time, their talent, their tools, their skills to come out and build that playground. And it was great because we had a crew of women who worked in the sailor kitchen and, and they cooked lunch for all the workers every day. We, the community members donated the food for the meals and um, departments came together. Everybody wanted to be a part of it. And um, we had crews out there that unloaded the trucks when, when they showed up with the equipment and we sorted them into piles. And then um, it came time to put the playground together and we had a playground supervisor that we were able to hire um, to come in and, and direct us on how to do this. And um, we had, it was great, we had all kinds of people, all ages. We had little kids helping with the sorting, and we had um, the men doing the heavy lifting and, and um, um, putting everything together. And one of the comments that, um, you know, I had heard during that time, and I always say this, because I share this, because this is something that really stood out to me. There was a young man who, who told me, he says, you know what, I don't even have any kids yet. He says, but I want to be a part of this. I want to help put this playground together so that when I do have a son, I can tell him, I helped build this for you. You know, and to me that, that, was, that was awesome to hear that. Some time ago, um, I did a, a large piece of um, artwork and I donated it to the uh, wellness center out at the Cataraugus Territory. And um, <clears throat> I did that in my appreciation uh, for what I've just talked about, is our, our health and our culture and our preservation of our, our uh, history and our future. Uh, in, in the artwork I um, had done, I have a turtle in there, which is a, a symbol of the earth and our value system of the Seneca and Iroquois people. Uh, the turtle is a symbol of the earth. We call the, our, um, uh, the Great Turtle Island, and that refers to the North American continent. And we call the earth our mother. And that is the value system that we use. That is one of the most important uh, um, parts of our culture is our mother. We, she supports us. She, she's, we can stand on her. She supports our weight. And that's how we look at that value of um, how important that is. Then we have the son is our uh, father. Again, another important symbol of our life. And then uh, the moon is our grandmother. And again, the grandmother, the mother, the father, and the grandmother. And these four, four winds are the four seasons. And that is, again, environmental. That's important to our survival. And that is our value system. It's not money. It's not um, power. It is uh, an understanding of uh, uh, our environment. And so in that painting, I have the turtle. I have the three sisters, which we refer to and we honor our uh, women. We call the th uh, three sisters, the corn, beans, and squash, the three sisters, and that, that is a, uh, a value we place on our, um, how we honor and respect our women. 
and uh, what else is in there? Uh, our clan system. In the beginning, <clears throat> we used birds and animals to represent our families, our extended, extended families. Again, this re relates to our environment and Mother Earth, birds and animals. That's what we value in this uh, life. Without birds and without animals, nobody's going to uh, exist. And so, again, that's that value system that we have. Again, it's not money. Uh, next thing is the, what I have in there is our clans. Uh, our Gustoet, which is a um, Seneca headdress, Iroquois headdresses, they have a, a different designs or, or styles. Uh, the Seneca Nation headdress has one eagle feather standing straight up, and that you can recognize that uh, leader back when we were having a um, grand council and so on, where all the nations would gather together and everybody was bilingual. So to understand who was speaking at the time, you just look at their headdress, their gestoa, and you could tell it was a Seneca nation with one standing eagle feather. I think any time I needed assistance here at the health center, there was always somebody here to help me, no matter what it was. Mainly, I think when I was diagnosed with cancer, there was a couple times I needed transportation, and they were able to set me up with somebody, especially through the respite care, to give me a ride or to pick me up or to offer me, even um, when I was having my chemo, I had several people come in and help with the meals. So there was more things beyond just uh, giving me pills. <laughs> I know that um, making sure our community is um, healthy is one of the major things that this, that this place provides and we really appreciate it. I see the young people that are now starting families more and more bringing and being aware that how often they need to bring their children in for care because those early habits that they establish like myself my mom always bringing me those parents are now establishing those same habits and instilling the importance of wellness to their children there's a lot this is the best place to work i always tell people when i bring on new staff people i say um, this is the best place to work because within our unit and <laughs> I'm so proud of them because I really, I, I get to select the people that work in our unit and I know the qualities that, and the skills so that they can bring to the position, you know, and I think we have a great team and um, I like to say that we do have dedicated staff here who are very knowledgeable and really do want to make a difference for our community. Um, they want to do more than just collect a paycheck. They're here because they want to be able to go home at the end of the day and feel that they, they really did the best they could and, and they helped. So. Yeah.